Hello and thank you for joining us. In today's video, I'm gonna be discussing a 2018 Kenworth with a Packard MX-13 engine. This truck has been leaking coolant for over a year, so I'm gonna share with you what we did to pinpoint the problem and what the problem is. It's very important to get a coolant leak fixed right away because you don't wanna cause any major engine damage. Be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you're notified when we go live or when we release a new video. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can call us at 972-225-3017. Let's get right into this video. The MX-13 is produced by Packard. It's a good engine. They use a few updated designs like combining the ECM and ACM and also updating and simplifying the engine wiring harness. It's very important to get coolant leaks fixed as soon as you find out. Symptoms of coolant leaks can be stains on the floor. You can have also coolant leaks on the engine. You see stains of coolant. You can have a check engine light saying low coolant. And another symptom is actually overheating. You don't want to overheat the engine. Anytime you run the coolant too low and overheat the engine, you can cause some major damage. The next item I'm gonna discuss is how we found that leak on this engine. I'm gonna show you what we did and the tools that we use and also pimp to show you how we pinpoint the problem. Okay, since we have a coolant leak, what we're gonna to do to find the problem is we're gonna pressurize the cooling system. We're gonna use this tool. It's a manual pressurizing tool with an adapter. So all it's gonna do is gonna replace the current coolant cap with an adapter style cap so that we can install a manual pump. Now this manual pump is gonna have a gauge on it. You don't wanna go more than 10 PSI. 10 PSI is usually gonna be enough. You wanna make sure everything's nice and tight. And most of these hand pumps, they, some of them will uh, be different than others, but most of them are gonna be the same. This is a manual pump and what I'm gonna pump this up to, I'm only gonna pump this up to around 10 PSI and that should be enough. We're gonna hold it there and that should be enough to find where our coolant leak is coming from. Now, where we, find, where we found the coolant leak is on the upper side of the radiator behind the shroud, which we're gonna give you some footage of that. You're gonna see the coolant coming out of there and that's exactly where we're leaking. It, now, this is a common problem. I wanna explain the radiator assembly. It's basically just two radiator plastic caps and on the center of it is an aluminum assembly that's clamped down, it's crimped down, and that's how the radiator caps are, are, are made, or actually the radiator assemblies are made. And they're housed in this radiator assembly here. Now, what's important whenever you're replacing a radiator is not only using good genuine parts, but when you install this new radiator inside this radiator cage, the housing, it's very important that you don't have any any wiggle room or the radiators playing around in there. When you do remove the radiator assembly, you have to remove this whole, this, this whole bracket here, this whole assembly. The CAC, the charge air cooler, can be removed all as one. You would have to relocate your AC, AC condenser, ensuring you don't damage any of your AC lines. You don't have to evac the whole system. You can kind of relocate it. Lift the whole assembly out. We usually use a, a cherry picker to lift the whole radiator assembly out of the engine bay so that we can actually get the radiator out of the cage. Uh, once you reinstall the radiator in the cage, as I mentioned, make sure there's no extra play. Some of the radiator assembly housings have bushings on the bottom where they actually mount onto the, onto the truck. Make sure that those bushings are in good condition and if they're in bad condition, go ahead and replace them. The hardware that holds the radiator in the cage, if they look to be worn, go ahead and replace those as well. Once you have your radiator back installed and everything's back to, back to operating, operating condition, you refill the coolant and pressurize it again to verify that you don't have any leaks. Another thing I'd like to mention is sometimes when you do these types of jobs and you pull all the coolant out, if you have a radiator hose that looks like it's in bad condition, go ahead and replace that with new clamps because you don't want to have a loss of coolant later on down the line. Some of these coolant hoses have not been touched since manufacturing, so when you start moving them around, putting them back together, you could have a coolant leak. The last thing I'd like to mention about coolant leaks, le leaks is that if, we have, if you have a coolant leak, say for example, this coolant leak is a pretty heavy leak, 
once we get this coolant leak fixed, if you have a lighter leak anywhere else, coolant is gonna leak out in the most uh, easy way passive. So if this is on a very open spot up here, that's where all the coolant leaks gonna, hap gonna, gonna leak out. Once we get that fixed, it's possible if you have another coolant leak somewhere else that's not noticeable, that could make that leak a little bit more heavier since we have now a closed system that like it's supposed to. So keep all this in mind. I hope this information was very helpful for you guys on fixing a coolant leak if you have a coolant leak on your truck. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. As I mentioned, coolant leaks can lead to actual engine damage. So get those coolant leaks fixed as soon as you find it. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you're notified when we go live or release a new video. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can call us at 972-225-3017. Thanks for watching, and until next time, be safe.